basically the bottom five, ten feet, five, seven feet. Yeah, that's a good deal. There he is. Oh, welcome back to another one, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to talk about using 2D sonar on the ice. There were some questions that popped up on old 2D sonar units, or 2D sonar videos that I was filming on my boat. I'm hoping to clarify a few things on the ice. Right now, I don't know if you can see this very well, but we're about 20 feet of water. The reason it looks like it's thick red lines is because we were actually over a brush pile. And to kind of help clear this up, the first thing I want to do is go to my beam width. And I want to make this as narrow as possible. So it's not taking in all of the brush pile. It's only taking in the small portion that this transducer is hovering over. There's a ton of fish down there because I've already caught a couple. Um, the trick is going to be pulling them out of the brush pile. It's super cold right now. It's about negative two, negative three. And I need the little scooper. It's super cold, so going to be a little bit tricky to pull them out of the brush pile but there's a mixture of crappie and bluegill down there whenever you're trying to vertical jig over the underneath your transducer you want to have a narrow cone angle uh, unless you're in shallow water you can see it falling down hopefully we have some fish popping up oh there's some there's some marks that's a super narrow cone angle so remember these fish have to be directly below it to get marked. You can see a bunch of fish coming up. Let's see if we can get one to bite. The main difference in using the narrow versus a wide cone angle, when you're fishing in deeper water, um, that cone beam, even though it's narrow, still has a big chunk of the bottom showing. Versus if you're in only five, six, seven feet of water, you might only be seeing less than a foot. So just a rule of thumb, when you're in deeper water, especially if you're ice fishing, you want to set this on a lower cone angle or a higher frequency. Um, it's going to take in less water or less area in the water column. If you notice in the bottom right corner of the screen, it shows 2.7 feet. That is the diameter of the cone that is reading on the lake bottom. So it's showing 2.7 feet of the lake bottom currently in 18 feet of water. When you're fishing in shallow water, you want to use a wider cone because if you use such a narrow cone in let's say seven or eight feet of water, the cone is too small for you to actually see your bait below the transducer and you're not actually gonna be able to see any fish. You, in that circumstance, you wanna use a wider cone in shallow water. I will say less than eight feet. But typically when you're ice fishing like this, narrow cone angle in 15, 20 plus foot of water, you're gonna be able to see your jig really well and you're gonna be able to see the fish come up and hit the jig. Well, I uh, brought in the underwater camera because I couldn't figure out why these fish weren't biting and um, looks like I found the answer. One, not one, but two pike. Just right, and there's my jig. I'm pretty sure that's my jig. Yeah, right, right between my jig. So we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna catch a bluegill anytime soon, I don't think, unfortunately. There are a ton of fish down there though. Let's give a little pan around view since we're waiting for these pike to leave. And that, there's crappie down there. There's a crap load of bluegill. A ton of bluegill. I might have, I might drop the jig down this hole. Crappie right there. Kind of just chilling up above the brush pile. These are cribs with a bunch of brush stacked in them. But, uh, yeah, you can see all these fish just tucked right to the side of it. This is pretty typical February. They're going to tuck into safety in deep water. This, this brush pile crib is loaded. And trying to stay, I'm actually surprised that Pike hasn't just jumped on one of them, but maybe doesn't want to chase just yet. I am not going to catch a fish down there until that Pike leaves. Wait, we got something coming in. There's one. He chomped it. It's a better bluegill, I think. Not really. Maybe he'd be an okay eater. I don't plan on eating any tonight, though. So I don't know if you noticed that, but basically what happened was I dropped the jig down, and that's this line slowly dropping down uh, on the historical data of the 2D sonar. 
dropped it down to just above the brush pile. Now, if you notice, there's sm smaller lines slowly moving up from the brush pile to take a look at the jig. Those are these bluegill. That's what it looks like when you're not moving in a boat. If you're vertically straight above fish, they're going to move up like straight lines. Once I set the hook, you'll notice that line goes straight up. That's because that's me reeling the fish straight up through the ice. Um, and I hope this helps out kind of some confusion with 2D sonar and kind of what it looks like versus an underwater camera. Hopefully this gives you an idea what fish really look like as they're moving underneath your transducer. Croppy, got him. Oh no, we came off. Those crappie hit, like, there's no doubt. It's not like a bluegill tap. When those crappie hit, it's, they smack it. Familiar with whatever color palette you're using, just for reference. Um, color palette is this maroon. Uh, you hummingbird guys are probably used to using this yellow, where the yellow is the strongest, and then the blue is the weakest signal. Garmin typically runs something like this. It's a blue background, but I think everything else is the same. Red's the strongest signal, and then it goes like green, yellow, um, as far as weaker signals. I typically like a clean background with the white background. All right, let's go. Um, one thing you can do if you're really trying to jig on the bottom, there's a zoom function. Let's see how I narrow it down to basically the bottom five, ten feet, five, seven feet. That's a good deal. There he is. That's a better bluegill, I think. Oh yeah, that's a tank. That's a solid, solid gill. That's probably eight and a half. That's darn near nine, I bet. I got the bump board. Let's go grab it real quick. I'm just curious. I'm gonna let him go. I just that's a really nice bluegill. Easy, 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 buddy. Oh yeah, he's almost eight and a half. Look at that, he's eight and a quarter. That's a solid bluegill. Get you back in the hole real quick. See you, bud. There's one. Finally. Might be a decent one the way it's fighting. Yeah, it's a chunk. That'd be a nice heater too. Nice chunk blue yield to end it. Well, I do appreciate you sticking through the end of the video. Uh, hopefully some of these settings will help you not only see the sonar, hopefully the comparison again will, between the underwater camera and your 2D sonar, kind of gives you a picture of what these fish are doing down there when they're staring at your jig. It's actually a really nice bluegill. But uh, appreciate you watching. If you've got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below. Or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Until the next ice video, maybe open water. No, we'll do another ice fishing video, I think. I think we'll wait until March for the open water stuff. But uh, we'll see you.